Hey guys, and welcome to Experience, the show where I, Indy Sagu, and my film crew take you from the largest expos to the smallest local outings and ask and answer one simple question. Is it worth the experience? Today we return to Oz Comic Con Sydney, held at Glebe Island. We're hoping to see some Star Wars, some Marvel, everything in between, and lots and lots of cosplay. The ticket prices are usually $35, but today we're here as media. Now it's time to find out if Comic Con 2016 is still worth the experience. Let's check it out. We're here with the one and only Mark Sesting. How are you doing? Hello, I'm behaving sadly. <laughs> so, Mark, uh, can you tell us, you know, what's your history regarding comics and how did you get into it? How did I? Well, history. Uh, I used to do comics back in the '90s, which is probably before most of your viewers were born, bastards. Um, uh, yeah, back in the '90s, I did little independent Australian comics, uh, which managed to get me banned, and then I didn't do comics for a long time. And I somehow managed to get into film the same week that I got banned. So I've been doing storyboarding and concept work for film for about 20 years, which has been fun. And now I'm back doing comics again, which is kind of confusing. Well, uh, going back to your film career, what, if you're able to, to say that, is um, what are some of the films that you've worked on? Yeah, lots of films that no one's seen, uh, which is probably good because they're really crap. Uh, but I did work on, I've worked on uh, one of the Star Wars films, I've done Mission Impossibles and spent, uh, spent eight years working on films about penguins, did two Happy Feet films, which I apologise for, and uh, of course Fury Road, which was fun. And I uh, would like to do another Fury Road again at some stage as well, because that was more fun. She was making no sense already. So, um, do you have any, any inspirations that you've had with your writing or, or, or artistry? Uh, inspirations. Uh, other, than, other than the desire to tell a very good story and to make things feel like they are well considered and work on a, yeah, they're, they're not things that just are a throwaway. You want to do something that's actually going to last in people's minds. So, it, I, inspiration is to do a job that people remember for a very long time. And then, of course, there's you know fabulous artists and fabulous writers that we all know. I mean, George Miller's been a person who I've uh, has been an absolute inspiration to me. I've done several films with him, which has been awesome. Uh, you know, we've all you know I'm of that age that I grew up on the original Star Wars trilogy, and so that was a big inspiration for me. Mad Max, all that sort of stuff. Uh, though oddly enough, I didn't grow up watching films or television or anything like that so yeah weirdly I kind of got got into pop culture through a very roundabout way like uh, a proxy type thing almost yeah like yeah yeah I didn't see Star Wars until 1983 which is six years after it came out but I had all the toys and I'd read the read the novel and I had the comic book uh, so yeah odd, odd things like that that's what happens when you grow up on an island in the middle of the South Pacific, where there's nothing of that sort of, sort of stuff around. So we've got, we've got this here, 2000 AD. Could you tell us a little, little bit about that? All right. So for those who don't know, 2000 AD is a very long-running anthology comic. It's one of the last 
remaining purely British comic books uh, done in the old paradigm of, uh, you know, British comics used to be a, a weekly thing. Uh, there are always anthologies that had at least five or six stories in them. Uh, um, really interesting way of storytelling because of course they are weekly and they're in small increments so you have to have uh, something which actually really 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 moves at a great pace. Um, interesting writing challenges and 2000 AD's been the launching ground for many 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 really amazing talents in the comic book industry. Uh, you know, Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, you know, amazing artists like Brian Bolland and uh, I've had a complete mental blank because there's too many to remember, but yeah, you know, so many, many people have come out of 2000 AD and uh, I've read it for over 30 years and uh, been a great fan, but I've managed to actually now I've got a job working on it. It's been fun, so yeah, I've been doing art for that, it's been nice. We've got the uh, 2000th issue coming up in three weeks which is a pretty good accomplishment. So, yeah, got something in that, that'll be good. And you've also done you know, um, sort of the printed, you could say, um, comic of the Mad Max Fury Road. Yes. Could you, could you say anything about that, or is that still... No, I can talk about that. I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, I mean, I storyboarded and did concept art for the film, and then when we finished that, which was back in 1999 to 2002, and the end of that, went to George and said, George, can we do comics? And George went, uh, oh, oh, oh that's a, that's a, that, that sounds like an interesting idea. I'll, I'll think about it. And that was 2002. And then 2014, he rang me and said, uh, I think I'm ready to do those comics now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks, George. 12 years, of, 12 years of waiting. But anyway, so we got to do comic books, which were co-written by myself and uh, the other uh, one of the other screenwriters on the uh, film, Nico Lasuris. And they are prequels, not necessarily origins, but prequels telling elements of the stories of some of the major characters within Fury Road, uh, which was a lot of fun. And I'd like to do more of those as well, but we'll see how that goes. So they, they put certain characters in context, basically? To a certain degree, yeah, but without actually making it a necessary read in order to understand the film. Yeah, you're trying to make stories that actually stand on their own and add an extra level of mythology and uh, a deeper understanding of all, of all the subliminal stuff in Fury Road, because there's so much stuff in Fury Road, hopefully it adds to it, which generally I think we've been reasonably successful in doing. So that's been fun, yeah. Well, any plans for the future, Mark? Uh, other than having some more sleep, uh, I'm, I'm currently working on a uh, Phase 3 Marvel film which I can't say anything about because there is a sniper out there somewhere. The Marvel stand is just over there so they'll just shoot me or run me over with that bloody bike. Um, so yes, Phase 3 Marvel film that may have something to do with Africa. Um, so storyboarding that and then after that, I don't know, I'd like to do uh, hopefully some more work for 2000 AD. Uh, Hopefully some more work for yeah. A few a few a few things in the pot in the pot. We'll see how we go. Fantastic. Anyway, Mark, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you have a great Oz Comic Con. I'll do my best. Yeah. I'll have my I'll have my muffin and I'll feel so much better. Breakfast. Thank you. <laughs>
guys, we're here with comic book artist Brad Walker. How are you doing, Brad? Good, very well. Thank you. Do you enjoy your first day here at uh, Oscom Con? Yeah, I, just, I love the natural light we get in this convention center for drawing, and <laughs> the crowd seems it seems pretty packed already. Even though I heard it's difficult getting people in over here on the on the island, but it looks like you know it's a good show, a good crowd. So is this your first time at uh, Oscom Con, or have you been to others? Uh, my first time at Sydney. My first time in Sydney at all. Uh, I did Melbourne last year uh, and Perth and Adelaide the year before that. So. Well, um, just, just regards yourself, Brad, when did you first start getting into comics and, and artists? Uh, I drew, I watched uh, that old 60s Spider-Man cartoon with the, with the famous theme song. I watched that, reruns of that as a kid. Uh, I grew up outside Chicago um, and I watched reruns of that and so I would draw Spider-Man as a, as a really little kid. Um, and then I got into comics um, late 80s, I guess. Um, so around uh, when Robin died, just before the Batman movie came out, um, right before the big 90s boom, I, I got into comics and I was drawing them, you know, like crazy every day. So. So, would you say that you have favorites of superhero or super villain, or was it, was it more, was it more of a broad view? Uh, I've got a lot of favorites. I always, I've always been a Spider-Man guy ever since you know a little, I'm a little kid watching that show. Um, but I real, I got pretty deep in the in the Marvel and DC pantheon uh, as I got into the actual books. Um, so I've got tons of favorites. I'm a big Fantastic Four guy, Superman, uh, the Flash. Yeah, yeah, I got. So would you say, um, like the comic books that are being released now? Would you say that they're they're being written especially for the movies, or would you say that the movies were sort of doing their best to just to find out bits and best um, bits and bobs from comics? Uh, I mean, you can obviously see ways where the comics are um, trying to stay in tune with the movies just for recognizability. You know, you have a you have an audience of millions of people who don't read comics who are seeing the movies, so you need to be careful. Um, that what you're presenting, if there's a potential fan that saw Civil War that might want to pick up a Captain America comic, I think there's a feeling that you need to um, make it at least recognizable to that fan so that they're not coming in completely confused. And I think comics work to do that. But at the same time, you know, that's a hard... The production schedule, the delivery method, all of it's so different between comics and movies. It's, it's difficult to to stick too close to what any other medium is doing without really holding yourself back. So I, I think it's kind of a fine line that you have to, to ride. So with the comics that you've worked on yourself, Brad, uh, what are some of the publications you've been affiliated with? Uh, I've done a bunch of Superman in, in action comics. Uh, I drew Guardians of the Galaxy and the, the book that they ended up adapting into the movie, the, the run in 2000, I was on it in 2008, 2010. Um, and that's the one that they that the director sort of ran with. Um, I drew Sinestro recently, uh, Green Lantern, New Guardians. Uh, I drew Secret six years ago. I drew some Batman, uh, and now I'm on Aquaman. So. Would you say your current um, role with Aquaman are you, is is it from scratch or are you continuing the story? Yeah, we started over uh, with the Rebirth relaunch that DC did line wide. Um, we started Aquaman from there, and uh, you know it, it wasn't a continuity uh, reboot, but it's all—it's very new reader friendly, and and we're sort of uh, just starting from from a point where you don't need to have read any anything before, and we're just just running with it and just trying to tell a good Aquaman story. So it, it's kind of it's the best of both worlds for people who uh, really want a ground floor approach and also for people who are tired of reboots and relaunches and aren't looking for another one. It's, it's somewhere in between all that, so. Would you say, as an artist, um, would you happen to have any inspiration that you've had throughout the years? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was reading 10 to 30 books a month, probably, uh, you know, all throughout the, the 80s and, and 90s, so I, I picked up little things from from other artists in the industry all throughout that. It, it's always kind of hard for me to pinpoint um, any, any one artist that 
is a huge inspiration. And, and I kind of think you're you're doing your own art a disservice when when you're that focused on any one other person. I, I think if you're doing it right, I think you're picking up bits and pieces um, all throughout your your life as an artist. Um, and and your influences shouldn't be that easily recognizable, or else you're not you're not enough of an individual probably to to, to do yourself justice. So. Yeah. So, Brad, what are you currently working on at the moment, or, or in the future? Do you have any plans to work on something else in the future? Uh, I'm on Aquaman for the long haul, so we just started. We're on issue six now. Um, and my issue six came out last Wednesday, uh, where he fights Superman, and it's all very uh, explained throughout the first arc why the two of them are at odds, and um, and I'm on I'm on Aquaman going forward. So. Yeah, Brad, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you for the time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we hope to see more. Great, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. John, how are you doing, John? Very well, thank you. That's good. So, first of all, can you tell us about you know yourself and your publications. Um, all right. Well, my name is John Sommeriva. I'm a local artist from Sydney, Australia. I was born here, and um, I've been drawing comic books since about 2002 professionally. It's uh, something that I've wanted to do my whole life, um, and I'm very lucky to be able to do this as a full-time job. Um, the stuff I have here right now, these are my art books, which I, I like to put out. I think, you know, in general at these conventions, I meet a lot of fellow artists and people that are just interested in art in general. Like, when you, when you meet an artist, you can take a little piece of um, that person's life home, you know, with one of these art books. It's got, you know, they're, they're about 88 pages and it's just got commissions and, you know, different things that I've worked on over the last few years. So, this is the fourth one which I've just put out. You can see my uh, little self-portrait there as I like to think of myself on, on the cover there and um, yeah, they're, they're just fun. I, I, I also obviously work on comic books, that's the main thing that I do. Um, do you want me to tell you the stuff that I got yeah, coming yeah, out? Yeah, I was, was going to ask you. Yes. Right now I'm actually working on a Ninja Turtles and Batman crossover which is uh, going to be this pretty big sort of a project that's coming out yeah, and that's going to be uh, published in November, I don't know if I just said that. November, 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 yeah, hey. November. And, uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm working on that right now and it's, you know, the deadlines are crazy but I'm having the time of my life because, you know, I get to work on these really exciting properties that uh, I grew up on as a kid, you know, like I, I grew up watching Ninja Turtles and I grew up watching the Batman animated series and I get to draw them now. Um, aside from that, I also have a creator own book which I drew quite a few years ago and we're finally releasing a collection of it. It's called Gemini, that's coming out through Image Comics and um, yeah, I'm really excited that all this stuff now I get to share it with the world. So you mentioned you started back in 2002. Yes. Um, what things did you work on back then? Uh, so the, well the very first thing I ever worked on was a book called Noble Causes which was through Image Comics and um, very, very soon after that I was offered a job with Dark Horse Comics drawing Star Wars. 
So I did a Star Wars Tales story. I think they were testing me out, you know, to see if I actually could do this job. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. And, and then I was given my own series called Go Boy 7. And, um, you know, all of this was a very trial by fire learning process. You know, I was a 20, 23, 24 year old kid. I was just having, I, I took it for granted, you know, I was having a, a good time because I got to draw comic books, I was making good money. And um, I, didn't, I didn't work like a professional, you know what I mean? I, I, just, I just did this work, I put it out there, but, and I was learning at the same time, but it, it wasn't until later on that I really said, I'm gonna, I gotta do this seriously if it's gonna be a job and be disciplined, you know, and actually sit there and get my work done. I don't know why I'm telling you that, because uh, it's a very <laughs> negative thing about me in a way, but <laughs> hey, now, now I work my ass off, right? All right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, he's the one with the, with the books. So it's all right. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> no, it's good though. Like, like we get to see that it's not just you know it's not just rainbows and you know, sunshine. Right? It, it does take a lot of hard work. Oh, just... definitely. Yeah. You, if you if you want to be doing this job, it's one of those jobs that you gotta love it. You know, you really gotta love it because it's um, long hours. You you're working. It, some some days it can be really frustrating. You know, like um, maybe your drawings aren't coming out the way that they should, or you're trying to learn how to draw something new or getting familiar with new characters, whatever it might be, you know, and uh, you just got to fight through that basically. And you're not getting paid for that. You're getting paid because you've reached a certain level and it's a flat rate. You get paid this much for your page and that's it. Doesn't matter if it takes you two hours or 14 hours, you know, or two days, whatever it is. So it's up to you to, you know, manage yourself and, and figure all that stuff out, I guess. So you mentioned um, you've got a crossover with the Ninja Turtles and Batman. How on earth are that? <laughs> you know, the, the, those two sort of like they, they are iconic, but how yeah. did it come about? Yeah, well, it's a it's a bit of a, a no-brainer in a way. You know, you've got these like slick ninja mutant characters, you know, and Batman comes from this world where he's all about his, um, you know, martial arts training and all that kind of stuff as well. So they they and they, you know he's, he's very much about you know hiding in the shadows and all that kind of stuff. So the characters really do fit well together and. Um, more than I even could have imagined myself, you know, starting to draw it, like, I haven't had to adjust my style really at all. It's all, it all just fits together, basically, the way that it is. And, um, you know, it's just a collaboration between IDW and DC Comics. They're able to, to do this sort of thing. It's, it's awesome, you know, like, for the fans and people that are into those properties to be able to do this. It's a really cool time to be in comics, I guess, you know, because they're able to do that. They've, uh, they, they already did one series, which was um, the first one, which was six issues, Batman Ninja Turtles, which uh, a good friend of mine, Freddie Williams, he, he did the art for it. And it was hugely successful, you know, it did so well. And, um, you know, now we get to have our chance to do it in the animated style. And, you know, I, I hope we do half as well as those guys, because it, it, it was great, you know. So, uh, in regards to the storyline, if I'm able to ask, is it more of a, like a very serious, or is it quite comical, or is it a bit of both? Um, it's, I would say it's really, really in the tone of uh, the Batman animated series from the 90s, so that Bruce Tim kind of a style, you know, so it, it is it is definitely all ages, um, and you know, there's some fun jokes and goofy bits in it, you know, you're going to get that with certain characters, the way that they interact together, but um, it's, like, for me, it's, it's, uh, like, I can only, like, for me, it's, it's fucking cool. You know, like that's how I would describe it. Sorry if you don't like swearing. You can beep that out if you have to, but it is. It's just cool, man. Like just the, the, the seeing those characters and those designs, um, and then the, like the tone of the, the the script just fits perfectly with that. You know, so we're really it's a love letter to that that particular um, version of Batman and also the Nickelodeon Ninja Turtles. You know, like. I, I, you know, it's it's everything I could have hoped for, I guess. It's almost like best of both worlds. Definitely, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. That's why you're the guy doing the interview. <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Um, okay, after this project, do you have any plans for the future? Any other projects you're going to do? Or? Yeah, I do. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this will hopefully, um, you know, get my work out there a little bit more so more people can discover what I do. Um, you know, uh, it's a really good platform for that. And, you know, my my goal, I like to put this out there, you know, just to, just out in the universe, so we'll see what happens. But I, I would I would like to draw Spider-Man. I think that's a comic that really would suit my style. It's, um, it's a character that I grew up reading since I was a kid. And, you know, that's my, probably my next goal after, you know, I've had my fun with the turtles and all that kind of stuff. 
right now I'm, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. That's an, that's the thing I do. And, and aside, aside from that, you know, obviously more uh, creator-owned. I have so many of my own characters and ideas that I like to put out there. So yeah, there's uh, there's there's many years left in life. To, to do this stuff, so I'm really excited about that. Fantastic, John. Anyway, thank you for speaking with us today. It's okay, no problem. And, yeah, Pleasure. I will hope to read the, uh, the, the epic crossover. Yeah, man. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts on it. <laughs> will do. No worries. Thank you. Cool, man. No worries. See you guys. That wraps up Oz Comic Con Sydney 2016. Was it worth the experience? Well, the price of parking as well as the general admission ticket has gone up compared to last year. There wasn't a large variety of food and the food that was there was expensive and quite mediocre. However, in spite of this, we did see a lot of fantastic things, such as a lot of great Aussie artists and authors, friendly staff and volunteers, and mind-blowing cosplay. Also, compared to last year, the foot traffic was pleasant despite the crowded event. Is Oz Comic Con in 2016 still worth the experience? The answer is yes. Even though there's things to improve on, it's still a great day. And on that note, we'll see you for the next experience. Cheers. So they're actually balanced, so as a weapon, you want it about an inch past the oh.